Hey there, YouTube friends. It's Brett with RecordingCrave.com. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I greatly appreciate it. Hey, in this video, this is video number two of Mixing Brass or Mixing Horns, Volume 2. And in this portion of the mix, we are going to be covering the drum set and how we get the drums to go from this to sounding like this. Coming up right now. Hey, it's Brett with Recording Crave. Let's jump into video number two of the Mixing Brass Volume 2. And we're going to cover the drums on this video. And we're going to show you how to take your drums. I'm going to hit Command Equal. The other window here. And we're going to solo up the drums. And how to get this sound from this sound. So let's go. Okay, so the first thing I want to start with is the kick drum. Now, generally, I don't like using sound replacement unless I absolutely have to. And in this case, I did on the kick. And basically... The only reason I really did, I, th I think I could have got a, an okay sound off his kick, but his kick hits were so inconsistent. So for that sample, I am using m one of my custom samples that I created from a Pearl kick that I recorded in 2004. That's the sound here. Let me bypass the other processing on there. So that's what it sounds like. And then I added this DW kick overhead mic from one of Slate's choices there just adds a little bit of ambience in the background there and then what I did on top of that was I put an REQ6 a Renaissance EQ from Waves I love this plugin it has a little grit to it so here's what that sounds like it's bypass now we're gonna turn it on And basically what I did was I rolled off everything from 35 hertz on out. And then at 37, I cut about 4 dB on there just to get rid of some of that. Kind of, it's not, not super harsh, but it just got rid of some of that frequency I didn't want. And if I need it, I can add it back in if I need a little more snap. Okay. Then what I added was the CLA 3A plugin for just a little bit of control over the kick drum. And not only control, but to pull it into your face just a little more and tighten it up. Just gets it into your face and tightens up that kick drum. Okay, then we're going to jump over to the snare. The snare here... Bypass all that. Okay, the first thing I have on the plugins was is again the REQ6 from Waves, the Renaissance EQ. Great little plugins if you don't have them. And that's I'm not getting paid to say that. I just like using them. So on this one, you can see I have a pretty, pretty drastic drop at 648. Now, you may like the sound of the snare the way it was, and maybe you just want to enhance that a little bit, but uh, that wasn't working for me. And then over at uh, 1300, I have a negative 4, and then at 3300, I have a negative 6 on that. You can... It takes a lot of that lower mid-range and some of the upper mid-range out, which we're going to sort of pull back with the Shep 73 EQ here. So let me play this. So what, he, what I've done here is I have a high pass filter at 80 on that. I might try turning that off in a second. Then a big boost at uh, 220. At 3.2 I have a boost at 4.2. And then at 12K, I have a boost at 5.1. Yeah, I'm going to leave the high pass filter off.
gives it a little body. Now I may change that in a second here and I'll show you why. Okay, so the compressor I have on, I have two compressors on the snare and I'm using the CLA 76, one of my go-to compressors. Again, it just pulls some things forward. It, it's a little gritty. You can see where I have the attack. I don't have it a, all the way up. I have, it, I have that first transient just hitting and then uh, the release is fairly quick. I could probably turn that back just a skosh. Okay, and then I have after that, which I don't use this plug-in on a snare drum too often, but for some reason I did on this, and that was to bring some body back into the snare. You know, the CLA 2A is one of those plug-ins that uh, will pull some tones underneath and make them louder that, that are part of the uh, signal being processed there. And I'll show you what I mean here. You can hear the body on the bottom just come back. So, so some of the, some of the low mid we took out, whatever low mid is still there, that CLA 2A is, is making it a little more solid in that area. Now, if I would have all that low mid in there, then we, we would have way too much. So from there, from there to here. Quite a bit nicer, in my opinion. Okay, so now we're going to go to the toms. Okay, again here I'm using the Sheps 73. And you can see what I have going on here at 60, got a big boost, 2.7. I got uh, at 700 hertz a negative 7, almost 1 dB. Um, and then uh, 12, I just have less than a half a dB of gain there. And that's about it. And you can see where the preamp is set, which is extremely difficult to hear. And then I have the CLA 76 after that. Just compressing, you know, maybe three to, I suppose it could be five on some really harder hits, but uh, about three and a half, four dB there. Not a, I mean, it's a fairly faster attack and just giving me a little control. And again, the 1176, what I love, it just has a little grit to it and I can't explain it that's kind of what I hear and it just adds some uh, sizzle to the instrument or whatever it's on actually and then let me jump over here to the other window I'm gonna hit command equal and come back here so the way I have these panned is the first tom is far left so as far as over as I can go the second tom is is about 11 11 30 the floor tom is panned over about three o'clock about three three thirty on the dial there. So let's jump over to Tom 2 and come right here. Okay, again, I'm using the Sheps 73. It's probably what I started with when I started EQing. And you can see I pulled out quite a bit at 700. I pulled out about 6 dB, added about 5.6 dB at 60 hertz, and then just about 1 dB added at 12K. And that's about all that the Sheps 73 is doing. Other than the tone it adds as soon as you put it on there. So on this one I added an REQ6 again, the Renaissance. I wanted a little more polished sound. So here's, I'm going to bypass it and here's what it sounds like. Let me bypass the... Okay, so that's just the Sheps 73 alone. Then I'm going to engage this EQ. just polishes it up a little bit and I did a pretty good uh, scoop out of here at 403 hertz and it's a pretty wide band and then I have a little boost here about 2 dB at about just under 5k and then using the CLA 76 again you can see where that's set I have again the attack and the release I have a fairly fast attack but letting this first transient get, you know, get through
just using it for a little control. You know, we're getting about, on this hit, we're getting about a negative 3 dB gain reduction. And then the floor tom. Using the REQ6 again, almost the same setting as Tom 2. Using it for polish. Let me bypass all this. So that sounds a little a little flappy, a little cardboardy with some plastic on it or something. So uh, what I would have started with the Shep 73 because it is my go-to. And I have actually a cut at 1.6. I have quite a pretty big cut at about 6.8 dB. And then at 60 hertz, I have added almost 5 dB there. I did a high pass filter on 50, probably to control some low end. And then at 12K, I added almost 2 dB. And then again, the REQ6, I added on there to polish it out a little bit. You know, and that's a judgment call. Totally, uh, totally up to the ear of the beholder there. And then for the compressor, again, the CLA 76. Pull the attack back just a little bit. It's almost a little too uh, snappy there. Let me pull. Okay. Now, to hear all those tom fills in context, okay, and then I have verb on there, but we'll get to that in a minute here. So, the next thing, the next thing I have is the overheads. And I'm using the CLA drum module from his uh, Chris Lord LG series uh, plugins here. And I'm using the room section on there. And you can see I have the bass set on the lower setting there. And then you can see that's where that's at. The treble is set on the roof setting. And there's no compression on this module. And then uh, this, I do have a little bit of reverb on there, and it's just a really light studio reverb. And here's what the overhead sound like. That's on. I'm going to turn it off. It's not doing a lot. It's just basically adding a little bit more presence on the cymbals. That's sort of what it's doing there. Okay, let's move on to the snare verb. That's with the reverb on, let's bypass it. Okay, let's see what we have going on here. I'm using the classic plate from IK Multimedia. And this main setting with this easy button on is just kind of an overall quick quick edit section right here. I usually go into the advanced and let's go through this real quick. So in level is always up all the way, mixes up all the way, image in and image out is on stereo. And the, the only time I ever really mess with this mix part right here is if I have it inserted on an actual channel. But I usually use an aux channel and I'll usually leave that up all the way and then use the aux fader to adjust that. And then the reverb time is set at 1.3. Then these parameters, I probably didn't mess too much with. I probably left them similar to where they're at, except for maybe this guy here. And then for the reverb itself, the room size is 14.5. Diffusion, this stuff I don't usually mess with too much unless I'm really trying to change something up. Color, which is the filters on the EQ itself, so I have a low cut filter at 1K and then a high cut filter at 7.6 and then the low cut on here and here is left alone. 
Reflections, I don't touch. Echo, I don't touch. Again, that's done to taste. Everybody's going to really uh, have their own flavor that they want. And as long as you're happy and the band is happy, then, then that's what is important. Let's go to the tom verb. Okay, so the tom verb basically is very similar to the snare verb. In fact, it's almost identical. All the settings are pretty much the same. This is the same. This is the same. The room, everything here is the same. The only difference is this, this uh, filter here on the, the toms, and that could probably be even brought back. It's almost got a little too, but too much high end on there. So they're basically the same, I just have the tom verb up a little bit louder. Pretty sterile without the, the verb. Okay, so the next thing I have is the drum bus. I will get everything set on the individual channels. I will get everything EQ'd and compressed the way I like it. And then I will put a compressor on, which is usually this guy here, the Brainworks Townhouse bus compressor or the FG Red from Slate. And I will put that on there and I will listen to it. And usually it really pulls out some things on, on the drums. And then I, uh, in this case, I put a Sheps 73 EQ on there as well. I don't always put an EQ on the drum bus, but if I find I'm trying to pull some more stuff out, then I will. So let me bypass the plugins real quick. Here's the compressor. What I notice right away when I turn the compressor on, it pulls the drum set forward. The kick gets it gets much more punchier, and the snare gets a little more aggressive, a little grit on it. I mean, the compressor kind of sounds like it looks. It looks like uh, it looks classic. It looks a little dirty. You know what I mean? I like it. Okay, bypass. Like it adds a little more clarity too, between the between the top, between the drums. Like the kick and the snare just gives them a little more separation, and the same with the overheads. It just it's a really nice sounding uh, compressor. That's doing. So let's jump over to the bass guitar. I'm gonna bypass this. <laughs> So this Shep 73. Six dB at 12K gain. 700 hertz, we have 7.6, so some big boosts. And 60 hertz, we have 4.3, and I do have the high pass filter on at 50. Just gives it some more presence, which I like. Again, the CLA 76 for compression on there. Just taking a few dB off, sometimes jumping up to 5, it looks like. Yeah, 
Yeah, so that is pretty much it. That's the drums and the bass for this mix. And it's just kind of a static mix right now, so nothing's set. In another video, we'll go over that. But in the next video, we're going to talk about the keyboards, and we are also going to talk about the vocals and guitar, and nothing's set there. I do have some plugins on there ready to go, but nothing has been adjusted and nothing on the vocals at all. So anyway... This is Fergie saying thank you so much for tuning in today. I greatly appreciate it, and we hope to see you in the next video.